Good afternoon, MPC. Kasama na natin si Chief Presidential Legal Counsel and Presidential Spokesperson, Salvador Panelo. Good afternoon, MPC. Ano pangalan niya, no? Ni Umali. Kasama natin kagabi. Si Maris. Chismis na kaganda ko eh. Pinag-uusapan na kaninang umangan nila Arnold yung <laughs> pati yung sa apo, na <laughs> yung toys, pati yung bisikleta, <laughs> pati yung kung ano nang spekulasyon eh. Funny. <laughs> Maris talaga. <laughs> Di ba GMA siya? O, oh, siya sa kanya nang galing yan. Anyway, thank you, Dr. Mark Anthony Imperial. He attended to me. Magaling. Anyway, we would like to confirm. Nung ayun, ang alin. <laughs> the President directed the Executive Secretary, Salvador Medellea, to tell Secretary Teddy Boyloxin of the Foreign Affairs to send a notice of termination to the U.S. government last night. And the Executive Secretary sent the message to Secretary Teddy Boyloxin and the latter signed the notice of termination and sent to the U.S government today. Question? Tina, and then Henry. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, can you please uh, educate <coughs> us when will the notification process start your countdown? 180 days from the receipt of the notice of termination. Sir, your notice will be sent Directly to Washington or what? I, I don't know exactly. Channels. But the U.S. government. Okay. Henry. Secretary, yesterday uh, there was this pronouncement of the president that the president of the United States trying to save the uh, termination of the VPA. Can you uh, elaborate, expand on that, please? Perhaps there have been some emissaries sent to the president about the desire of the president of the U.S. Uh, yung usapan ho, in the between the president of the United States and President Duterte? No, no. Not they haven't level. talked. They haven't talked yet. So when you say emissaries, that includes? So most likely it's coming from the people from the U.S. Embassy. I'm not, I'm not uh, actually I'm not sure about that. I'm just taking a cue from the President's remarks. Mm -hmm. But um, I, will, uh, I was calling Ambassador Bates Romualdez. He returned my call, but I wasn't able to get it. I, was, I returned his calls. <laughs> So, sigurado hindi pa nag-uusap si uh, President definitely. Trump at si President Trump. Hindi pa, hindi pa, hindi pa nag-uusap. Thank you. Ina? Francis? Sir, just to oh. clarify, yung after 180 days, as far as the palace is concerned, it's terminated? Ganun ba yun? Is that the completion no, of the process? No, the notice of termination has been sent. Mm -hmm. And the effectivity of that would be 180 days from the receipt of the U.S. government. Of such knowledge, sir. Um, he. I'm not sure, but does is there isn't there a need for the U.S. to also respond and maybe react first, no, or is the, it a, like a unilateral decision? From what I know? read from the agreement, there is no need for that. There is no response needed. So we can ter the president can terminate it unilaterally by himself. Yes. Okay. But the effective uh, date would be 180 days from receipt of the receiver, U.S. government. Okay. Sir, nakaroon po ng um, briefing si U.S. Depu US Department of State Assistant Secretary um, Clark Cooper. <coughs> he said that there is a scheduled strategic um, dialogue 
next month in March. Um, supposedly, natalakayin din po dun yung VFA. And he, a part of his quote uh, from the interview said that there is no decision yet. What do you say to that about the termination? Well, that has been overrun by the fact of sending of the notice of termination. So will we still be sending um, a team or uh, people to on sa sinasabing dialogue? That I don't know. We have to, we'll have to ask the Secretary of Foreign Affairs about that. Thank you, sir. Francis. Microphone, please. Sir, good afternoon po. Sir, uh, pahayag, pahayag lang po sa sinabi ni Senator Rablecto na paano po paghahandaan ng, ng Pilipinas in case na yung mga ayuda na binibigay ng US... Paano, ano? Paano, paano po paghahandaan ng, ng uh, Philippine government yung in case na yung mga ayuda na binibigay sa Philippine military, eh, maglaho na yon ano magiging ano, second option ng Pilipinas? Kasi katulad niyan, sa April, May, nagkaaroon po tayo ng mga, ng mga, ng mga Amerikano rito, nagkaroon ng training through Balikatan. Uh, anong magiging next option o ng, ng government po? Well, from what I gather from the Secretary of National Defense, uh, one of the countries, or one country has already offered to enter into another agreement. So, meron din namang mga ibang bansa na nag-offer. But, as the President said, it's about time we rely on our, our own resources. We have to strengthen our own capability as a country relative to the defense of our land. Yan ang pinakano ni Presidente. Mahirap yung keep on relying, lalo tayong umihina. Oh, uh, yung mga previous statements, Sir Nidi and Secretary Lorenzana, in case hindi po America, will, will, we will be open more sa training with, tama ho ba, China, possibly, or Russia po ba? Na, ang narinig ko, UK. Uh, Parang UK ang narinig ko. Saan po magsasentro yung training, sir? Counter-terrorism? Hindi, hindi ko alam. Basta yun ang narinig ko. Thank you, sir. Follow up. Tina. Sir, with this development, how, how, is, how do you see or how does the policy, the, the bilateral relationship with the U.S.? How will it well, adverse it remains, the for what? It remains warm. Hopefully, it could be warmer. Why do you say that, sir? Why? Because if you, I've been noticing that those who have been critical of the U.S. government policies have been given the preferential attention of the U.S. government. Pag pag na babanata sila, sinusuyo nila, yung mga kakampi nila, na api nila. Parang ganun ang dating eh. Pero sir, it, it, it seems uh, based on your statements that the president has has already decided this, decided this on the issue of uh, of uh, the sovereignty of uh, invoking the sovereignty of the Philippines. Ano bang ways na pwede hintayin natin or signs from the US para maiba yung environment? If we have to deal with other countries, we have to deal on the basis of equality and fairness. Hindi pa pwedeng one-sided ng agreement. Yun ang palaging sinasabi niya, Presidente. Ace? Clarification na, Secretary. Kasi yung sinight ninyong reasons for scrapping the VFA, kasama doon yung demand to release Senator De Lima. But the demand came from senators, from lawmakers. E separate po, di ba, ang Congress from the executive. And Even then, still, that's the voice of U.S. government speaking to us through uh, an equal branch of the three branches of government of the U.S. Kasi hindi ba unusual kung kailan mas friendly yung U.S. President kay U.S. kay Philippine President, eh, ngayon nagdi-decide yung Pangulo na... The friendship is more on the personal basis, not on the relations between the two countries. Pero may nagawa ba yung U.S. Executive Branch that offended our President 
to merit such... I think so. Banning by the immigration authorities, Senator, or rather canceling his U.S. visa of Senator Bato is an executive function, not the Senate of the U.S. Immigration yun, executive yun. Although I think in previous interview, parang sinabi ni President Duterte, hindi siya nininiwala na President Trump was behind that, if I remember it right. He may not be behind it, but it's the executive department. Immigration authorities pa rin. Okay, sir. Mylene? Sir, paano po yung pag-review ng Senado dito sa VFA? Baliwala na rin po ba yun, sir? Baliwala? Apo, yung pag-review ng sen Senado. Kasi mga buti nga yung nire-review nila para we will know from their point of view if indeed we have been disadvantaged in entering into this agreement. So that future agreements will be based on fairness, mutual benefits to both agreeing nations. Ariane? Hi, sir. Sir, um, yung ibang military agreements po natin with the U.S., would the palace like a review of that as well? Like the MDT, EDCA? Kasi sabi niyo, sir, to see if disadvantages to the government. Oh, that, that's what the Senate said. They will be reviewing all these agreements. How about the palace, sir? Eh, since nag review na nila, we will just siguro wait okay, and listen sir. to them, their recommendation. Okay, sir. And then, sir, you said na yung U.K., um, nag-offer? Hindi, parang narinig ko kay Secretary Delphine Lorenzana na, na may ano mga so? countries na nag-offer. Like, one of them is UK. How about China and Russia, sir? Hindi ko na, he didn't mention that. Okay, sir. But sir, at this point, is the government interested into entering into a VFA oh, basta, with other countries? Basta palaging pabursatan. Basta na may po mutual bang? benefit to both countries, we, will, we are open. Okay, sir. But the president, again, I will repeat, he said it's about time we rely on ourselves. We will strengthen our own defenses and not rely on any other country. Okay, sir. Pero may na-mention na po ba, sir, si President Duterte na countries that he's looking into entering wala, an agreement? Wala, wala siyang binabagay. Yung siya nga, yung siya kanya parang ayaw niya nga mag-enter, di ba? From, from the way he talks, parang tayo na lang muna. Huwag na tayong masyadong umasa dyan sa ibang bansa. Okay, sir. But of Thank course, you if the agreement would benefit us, I'm sure we will be open. Okay, po. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, Vance, follow up yan. Okay, microphone, please. Sir, <clears throat> what happened to EDCA and Mutual Defense Treaty with the revocation of BFA? Iyon nga pag-aaralan ng Senado, di ba? So they will study how the cancellation of VFA will affect the other agreements. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Questions may follow up. Other issue? Janeline? Sir, last night the president yes. said na he was unaware if there's there are nuclear arms brought in by the Americans in the country. Well, will the government now consider conducting an accounting of these arms and check if indeed there are nuclear weapons brought in by the Americans? I, I, I suppose it goes without saying. So do we have the capacity to detect these arms inside the country? I will have to ask the Secretary of National Defense. Ina. Just a quick follow-up. But what prompted the president to um, say that um, yung claims niya, what is the basis? I, didn't, I, I don't know. I will ask him. Okay. Okay. MPC questions? Other issue? Tina. So, sir, you mentioned on Friday na possible phone call with the pres president. Between President Trump and President Duterte, matutuloy pa ba? Yan lang. Hindi ko alam. Hindi natin alam. If there is initiative on the part of the U.S., baka kausapin ni President. As of this time, hindi ko alam. Questions, MPC? No more na? Wala na kayong tanong? 
Other issue, uh, vans. Sir, <clears throat> is there uh, an official memo on the study of travel ban to the U.S. for cabinet secretaries? What do you mean, study? There is, there is, there is a prohibition given to the cabinet members not to travel to the U.S. by the president, and we support that. So there is no memo, sir. Are you going to um, to have a memo for the cabinet sex? You know, eh, pumayag na nga kami, di ba? Hindi na kailangan yun. Sinabi ni President, okay na yun. Okay, thank you, sir. No more questions? Sir, merong tanong si si Jocelyn Montemayor. Monte, Monte May we ask for comment po on Taiwan's call for the Philippines to lift travel ban on the Taiwanese amid contra coronavirus? The travel ban, I understand, that included China was on the basis of the World Health Organization, including Taiwan as part of China. And since there's a ban on China, necessarily Taiwan being part of China is included. And we always follow the recommendation of the World Health Organization. So if there is a if the World Health Organization says there is a need for a lifting of the ban in any part of those already announced who have a travel ban, then we will supposed to do so. Call up, Ace. So for now, the ban stays. Hmm? The, the, the ban. Uh, for now, yes, of course. So what Until uh, the World Health Organization makes any announcement and the, and the Department of Health recommends to the president. So why are we retaining the ban? Because it's a precautionary measure. Yes, always for the safety of our countrymen. Okay, no more questions, MPC? Okay. May follow up? Ano, no more? Ace. Yung reaction daw po dun sa pag-drop na o pag, pag pag-drop ng sedition charges again sa uh, Vice President Robredo and parang na-indict din yata si na former Senator Trillanes and 10 others. Well, as a, a matter of policy, the President does not interfere in any proceeding involving the departments. If that is the finding of the mm -hmm. Department of Justice, as he keeps on saying, let the law take its course. There are notions na yung pag, pag clear kay Vice President Robredo daw is a sign na politicking lang daw yung charges. Do you agree with that? Well, you know, the prosecutors, those investigating prosecutors know their task to find probable cause. If the evidence presented to them does not show there is, then they have no other alternative but to dismiss the case. So no politics involved? We never engage in politics. Uh, what about uh, your statement to those facing young charges right now, like see, former Senator Trillian? Well, they have the opportunity to defend themselves. Again, the president says, let the law take its course. There are remedies available to them. They should avail of them. Okay, thank you, Sek. Okay, no more questions. Okay, Vance. Microphone. <laughs> Sir, <clears throat> uh, sinabi po ni Vice President Lenny Robledo na pang abuso daw po tong pag-file ng COA to. So, any reaction on this? And uh, nanandatili po ba ang stand ng ating Pangulo regarding yung sinabi niya na talagang babawiin po or etong sa ABS-CBN? We will repeat our position on the matter. The filing of a petition for co-warranto 
is on the initiative of the Solicitor General, pursuant to his constitutional duty to file any action in court in the event of any, from his point of view, transgression of any law. That's why he filed the case. The president has nothing to do with it. Whatever utterances the president made in relation to AVS-CBN came from his displeasure of being a victim of fraud relative to his paying for his campaign commercial that never was aired. Now, those utterances fall within the freedom of expression, and we cannot deprive him of that, given that the Constitution grants that to all citizens of the country. We will leave it to the Supreme Court vis-a-vis -vis that petition. And let me say that the grant of a franchise falls exclusively within Congress. And even in the, because some people are saying, oh, but uh, the president can veto in the event that the renewal is given by the Congress and the president vetoes it. Again, the Constitution says that can be by a three-fourths vote or two-thirds. May follow up. Other issue, Joyce. Can be overruled. In other words, from whatever angle you look at it, it's Congress. It's not the president. Joyce? Sir, yung Ibon Foundation nag-file pa ng complaint before the Office of the Ombudsman against three ranking government officials, including PCO Undersecretary Lorraine Badoy, um, National Security Advisor Jimenez Esperon, and um, Southern Luzon Command Chief Major General Antonio Parladi Jr. for red tagging. What is the palace reaction? Again, we will let the law take its course. The Ombudsman is an independent body, a constitutional body of that, and it will perform its task. But for the side of Palace, do we deny that these individuals are involved in red tagging? Kasama po kasi si National Security Advisors respondents. We will again invoke the constitutional presumption of innocence and the presumption of regularity of performance of duty. Thank you, sir. Okay. No more questions, MPC? Okay, thank you, Secretary Panello. Thank you. Thank you, MPC. Thank you. Back to our studio Hello. sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Hello. Television Network.